Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. The Boys, season three is out now on Amazon Prime. This is one of my favorite shows that is currently on, currently going through the streaming services. Uh, superhero shows, by far my favorite superhero show. And the reason why I love this show so much, because it is such an honest like telling of what it would actually be like, in my opinion, of what it would actually be like if superheroes existed today. In a day, in an age, in a country where capitalism is the, the end-all be-all. It's also a show that really understands and comments on pop culture, on society, on comments on political, what's going on in the political landscape in a way that no other show does. And for all that honesty and all of that groundedness, uh, I absolutely love it. Uh, as far as like this, this corporation that, that created these superheroes and is marketing them, is trying to use them uh, in very similar ways that like a Lockheed Martin uh, would utilize their manufacturing abilities to create arms for the, the government. Uh, that is what this company Vought is doing with superheroes trying to uh, license the superheroes out to the military. Uh, and uh, we see and not only license them out, but they're also kind of like Disney, how they they produce all these products and movies. They are infused with capitalism in every way. And you see how the power that you would get, the power a human would get, given the abilities of a superhero, godlike abilities, how that would completely destroy somebody's ego. Or not destroy an ego, necessarily, but inflate an ego. If, if you were the type of person that, uh, given superpowers, given godlike abilities, uh, and you are a type of person that, you know, leans on the, the right side of the political spectrum, you are uh, a fascist or have fascist tendencies, uh, you are somebody that, uh, that b believes that, like, uh, the, uh, the free market is a real thing, <laughs> Uh, the capitalism is a great system by which humans should be, be uh, you know, living and existing in. Uh, you could see how that could go bad, uh, especially inside the character of Homelander, uh, who is in so many ways Donald Trump. Just somebody that, I mean, there is definitely one thing about Homelander, by far an amazing performance. His performance, especially in season three, and even in previous seasons, but season three so much, because he is, after the events of season two, with the rise of the Nazi superhero, the old, the original uh, Nazi superhero that kind of, in so many ways, comments on the current Republican Party of the United States. Uh, after the events of that, he's kind of, uh, he's kind of, uh, he's a loser in this one. He's trying to regain his popularity. He's trying to uh, recover from the fact that he was in a relationship with this Nazi that was exposed to be a Nazi, uh, despite the fact that the, pro the, the messaging was very much of a Nazi, of the fascist variety. Uh, but he is, he's very conflicted in a lot of ways. And I love his performance. But even the fact that he like you find out that like even his upbringing where he was kind he was raised by doctors. He was like made in a Petri dish like he didn't have a regular upbringing, but also he had the privilege of being like untouchable in a lot of ways. Uh, and, and in so many ways, he embodies what is Donald Trump, right? Like Donald Trump didn't grow up like most kids grew up. I'm sure on some level he grew up very detached, like he was almost being raised by doctors. Like I'm sure there wasn't a lot of love in the Trump family, a family that is notoriously white supremacist, racist, uh, and, and 
you know, his dad was good with money. Trump, very much a failure in every business venture he does. Uh, but this Homelander character, in so many ways, is that. And and even there's part of the reason why I love this show is because of all the. I mean, there's tons of pop culture references. There's so much commentary on our culture in general. Uh, and one of the many examples of that is when Homelander, they're recruiting more members for the Seven. And one of the recruiters, uh, one of the superheroes is uh, Latino. And he, like, to make him feel comfortable... Uh, serves everybody at their little board meeting with taco bowls, which is a notorious Donald Trump tweet where he is giving his Donald Trump thumbs up, which Homelander does in this scene, uh, and talking about how much he loves Mexico's because Mexicans because he, he loves the taco bowls. Very similar kind of a racist type of uh, analogy comparison, uh, which... I know for those who may be conservative are saying, well, the Democrats have done that too. Yeah, no shit. Uh, white supremacy and, and politics kind of go hand in hand. Our entire structural system of government is based on white supremacy. Uh, like the fact that white people are in America in general is because of white supremacy, colonialism, all of that. So I understand that it's it's the the left side of the aisle isn't perfect by any means uh but at least i am able to criticize uh the people that are on the left uh and i don't worship them like the people on the right worship donald trump uh so very political i can't imagine what it would be like for somebody who is a conservative for somebody who's a republican for somebody that's like a proud boy a three percenter an oath keeper any of the people in on those right side uh you know white supremacists domestic terrorists side of the spectrum i can't imagine what they think while watching this show i can't imagine right did they watch last season and think of at that that nazi superhero as like the answer like oh she's got so many good points do they like go in talking about this show defending like homelander like oh he's got some good points just like a lot of right-wing people uh decide to to argue the 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 potential positive aspects of hitler i can't imagine like there's so many things in our culture where it's it, it would be interesting to understand how those types of people view those things or even if they do maybe they don't maybe this show is not watched by any of those people uh but i can't imagine it's such i, I would imagine it's a popular show i really enjoy it one of the best shows on amazon prime if not the best show uh but definitely one of the best shows on amazon prime um but yeah season three i'm going to spoil stuff if i haven't already obviously so go watch season three i think this I, I don't think it's necessarily as good as season two. Like the heights of season two were so great, especially in a time. I mean, that came out, I think, before the election. And it was like so on point with like how they use social media and memes to control the minority of people who are white supremacists in the country to boost, you know, boost overall acceptance of these hateful superheroes. I think that was by far the best season, uh, but this one isn't too far off from that. Uh, some interesting things happen in this season. You, you're, the majority of this season, there's a few different things. We have Temp V is a new thing where you can temporarily get superpowers, which is an interesting wrinkle to add into the show. We have a new enemy kind of uh, person uh, called Soldier Boy who is in many ways the same lineage as Homelander. Um, and then, of course, Homelander's son, Ryan, is a big part of this. Not a big part, but an aspect of the season. We have the boys who are basically part working with a new government organization that is tasked with keeping tabs on superheroes. So you have even them 
are rolled into this system that you find out is clearly just as broken as the reality of our government systems. Just as ridiculous as police who investigate police crimes. It's just as ridiculous as the government investigating the government as they do crimes. It's just, it's just kind of this ridiculous thing that one, just another aspect of the show comments on it. But Soldier Boy is an interesting thing. We have M.M.'s character who's dealing with his daughter and her stepdad. And her stepdad is kind of like somebody who's slowly becoming radicalized through the propaganda that supports Homelander. Even after the events of, of the previous season. Like this, this season almost is in a lot of ways similar to the events after January 6th. Where it's like there's still people like in line with with all of the people who stormed the Capitol. And it's like, uh, it's, it's, it's insane. It is ins- that just, sh- it just goes to show how powerful propaganda is. Uh, but that character's interesting. You have Huey and Starlight's relationship, obviously. You have Kamiko and Frenchie's relationship in this, in this season. Black Noir gets a bit more, uh, of a backstory. We get to know more of Black Noir in this, in this season. Uh, also, there's some redemption for Maeve in this season. A-Train kind of has an interesting story. I mean, after the events of last season, he's having heart issues from all the, the V that he's been doing. And that's worn on his heart. And he's, like, in a lot of ways unable to do what he used to do. He's also trying to be... He's trying to be change in the system while within the system he's trying to now stand up for black people in this country stand up against the the racism and the the system by which is oppressing minorities in this country but it's like his representation his character in so many ways is perfect because it's like it's almost like too little too late it's like somebody who works in a police department that thinks that they're going to eradicate uh the fact that police murder innocent people regularly uh and and will dump loads of bullets into unarmed black men without blinking an eye yet will take a known white supremacist terrorist into custody without incident right there's a clear divide in our country of how the police treat people in different situations the t- the moments in which the police actually show restraint versus the moments in which they they just blatantly slaughter people adults and children right and that's kind of like a train kind of trying to in some ways trying to make himself feel better, trying to be some redeeming character as a person, trying to make things right, which there is kind of some redemption in this season, which I appreciate. Like there There is a moment in this season where he legitimately and honestly apologizes to Huey. Like the thing, literally the event that starts this entire show when A Train runs through and explodes Huey's girlfriend like he finally gets that authentic apology which he had been searching for for two seasons it just happened to be at a superhero orgy (laughs) let's take a little break from the Ray Taylor show to promote my live art streams that's right I am an artist as well as a podcaster and I paint live every Thursday at 420 Pacific time Head on over, the best place ever for streaming, youtube.com slash inspired disorder. That's right, every Thursday at 420, you can watch me paint the many faces. Every week, I paint seven new faces of abstract portraits, ink on paper, and you can watch that happen. You can hang out with me while I listen to a classic episode from one of my favorite podcasts. Head on over to youtube.com slash inspired disorder and check it out. Say hi. Let's hang out. Let's have some fun. Let's paint some faces. Now let's get back to the show, which is crazy. A lot of like, 
a lot of very a lot of dicks a lot of dicks there is a superhero that crawls inside of a dick inside of the pee hole of a dick while on cocaine which is a hilarious <laughs> like there are some hilarious moments in this show that you just couldn't do in on network tv like you would have it would only be on like an hbo or something in the past but now with streaming services they don't have to abide by any kind of ratings things it's they they function even more with more freedom than a show like even hbo could have back in the day uh which i appreciate that because that scene is hilarious when you see it's like one of the first scenes in this show where they're like at a party the boys they're you know rounding up one of uh, like a superhero for whatever reason right they're like here you got to take care of this guy round him up whatever whatever and during that it's like there's this sex scene and in during this sex scene this he like shrinks down he's like an ant man but he's like having sex with another dude and the dude's like crawl inside of my dick <laughs> and you see the giant head of a dick and this tiny little superhero guy naked superhero guy crawl inside of it and and start to tickle it and then when he sneezes and just explodes the it's it, it is hilarious hilarious the guy with the gigantic dick is is in this season as well during the orgy <laughs> it's a great like the things that happen in this show are wild right like aside from the fact of how accurately it's talking about and and commenting on and criticizing the the american culture the global culture in a lot of ways uh it also is able to pull off these hilarious moments like there is one one aspect of the show that really criticizes everything is they is Frenchie and Kamiko go to a, a theme park, like a Disneyland Universal Studios type of a theme park. That's obviously the theme park for like a Vought theme park. Like everything's owned by Vought. Like Vought in so many ways is Disney. If Disney also was trying to get if like superheroes were real and Disney was trying to license their superheroes uh for use in the government right that and also worked in pharmaceuticals like that that is in so many ways what vought is is like the disney and at this theme park it is like so brand it is like such perfect criticism of how companies utilize social issues in for marketing purposes like every aspect of this place is like Oh, it's like the the uh, <clears throat> Black Lives Matter uh, kiosk for making. I, I forget how they all integrate, but it's like it's it it, it uses the Black Lives Matter. It uses like Pride Month. It uses um, like L B L G B T Q uh, barbecue kind of a, a thing. Like it is hilarious. <clears throat> this this scene where they're looking around. And, like, all of the shops are based on, are, like, puns using social movements. It, it's wild. It is so wild. There's also flashbacks. Like, we get some flashbacks that that give us some backstory to not only Soldier Boy, but also Black Noir. How Black Noir and Soldier Boy used to be part of the same super crew. Uh, also shows that you know the superheroes were definitely around i mean i guess last season the fact that during world war one or two i don't know exactly when the nazis made that super the first superhero but they've obviously been around for a while but the the flashback to showing uh soldier boy and and black noir's little little backstory was interesting you also get to see a little bit of butcher's backstory where he's trapped inside of a nightmare uh you get to see a little bit more of why he doesn't like his dad so much you get to see why what actually happened with his brother 
uh, what life was like that led his brother to no longer be alive. Very interesting. Uh, also, you know, adds more to the relationship between Butcher and Huey because Huey reminds Butcher of his younger brother that's no longer around. And you kind of see that play out a little bit more, how he's protective of him. But also, he's protective, but also hard on him in a lot of ways. It's pretty great. Uh, Huey and Starlight having issues, relationship issues, where Huey doesn't feel adequate because she's a superhero and he's not. And that is eating at him. And now with this introduction of Temp V and Huey taking temp v along with butcher uh is one able to feel like what it feels like to be superior in every situation for the first time like he he understands what that feeling is like to be the alpha quote unquote and to be fearless and to not have to worry about being the one who is constantly targeted and picked on which is an interesting dynamic, and you see how that ends up infecting his relationship with Starlight to where not only is he being kind of a dick <clears throat> because of him doing these things, but also, like, he's trying to be, like, more of the, like, an old-school kind of, like, patriarchal kind of dick. You know, like, oh, uh, I'm the dude, I need to protect you, type of a thing. But even that ends up getting resolved in a way at the end, towards the end battle, that, that makes it, makes him realize that his position as being somebody without powers, with a, 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 being with a woman who has superpowers, like, he realizes that he's able to do things and help in his own ways without trying to compete with her on that level, which I think is beautiful. Um, you have the deep who is an idiot rolled back into the seven, but clearly, and, and him and his wife are like riding off of the publicity of them surviving a cult, uh, that religious cult from the, the previous season. And trying to capitalize on that whole thing. But then you also realize that the Deep is pretty much a puppet for his wife. A lot of ways like Ronald Reagan. Like Ronald Reagan wasn't really there in, in the brain for most of his presidency. And was primarily a puppet for his wife and for other people. Uh, so I don't know if that's directly commenting on that specifically. But it, it's a fun, fun situation. Fun dynamic between those two. There's a lot of product placement, too, in this. And it seems like, I don't know why, but it seems like Starlight is the one selling the product in this show. Like, she's, like, it, the, the product name comes out of her mouth, and also Huey, like, so much. Like, at the beginning, I think the first episode, they say Aquafresh, like, at least three to four times. Like, it, very pointed... Make sure they say it, and some of it is clearly ADR, where it's like back is turned. It's like we need to have, like we made a deal with Aquafresh. We need to, the characters need to say it at least this many times. Also, White Claw is a huge, clearly a huge product placement in this. White Claw is a, a massive type of uh, one of the things. Also, Almond Joys. I don't know if specifically this season, but definitely in previous season because that is something that Black Noir is allergic to nuts and the whole Almond Joy thing uh, has came up multiple times with that. And then anytime they're actually in a grocery store, you can see all the, the labels of the brands like Doritos and stuff prominently. But like the Aquafresh thing and the White Claw thing were super noticeable. Super noticeable, which I don't mind they they're not doing ads obviously product placement is a, a massive thing that you can get money so it's okay but it's super it was super noticeable it wasn't it, it wasn't very subtle 
the the constant using of these brand names. But but it is what it is. It, it's okay. Um, let's see what else did I? There's a fun sex toy as weapon thing, which is an interesting kind of a trend I've seen. Obviously, if anybody's seen everything everywhere all at once, there's a uh, a, a, f- a butt plug fight. Um, in this one, there are dildo fights. Uh, a dildo gets shoved through a man's skull, which is, c- could never. I don't care how strong you are. It's not going to happen. It's never going to happen. You're not going to be able to thrust a dildo through a human skull. But this movie goes hard. And it goes harder than any dildo has ever been construction, constructed. And I, and I kind of appreciate that. You know, it goes hard, so hard that a superhero can crawl inside of a, a giant penis. <laughs> to I forget what that's called. I forget what that... Uh, that kink is called or that that uh that process of uh masturbation for men where you like use a, an instrument to massage the inside of the pee hole so i'm sorry i'm going there but it's a real thing and uh you know i forget sounding maybe there's there's a it's a thing don't ask how i know but yeah the the uh the uh product placement stuff uh definitely definitely uh noticeable let's see what else here the fact that uh butcher gets superpowers he basically gets aside from flight gets all the same superpowers as homelander gets the laser eyes obviously super strength um huey gets the ability to teleport which is funny because every time he does He loses clothes, or anybody he teleports with, they end up losing their clothes uh, during the teleport, which I thought was really funny. Uh, One of the side effects of being attacked, if a superhero is attacked by Soldier Boy, they lose their powers, uh, which is something we find out with the Kamiko character, who hates her superpowers, and then loses her superpowers, and then realizes... Because she thought that her superpowers caused her to be this ultra-violent thing. That it, when she no longer had her superpowers, she was able to realize that it was just her. Which is also a theme that Butcher uh, expresses as well. Where it's like, it doesn't change you. Being hopped up on V doesn't change who you are. Being, getting superpowers doesn't change who you are. It just amplifies the person you are, and it's not a good feeling when you have it, which, you know, gives some th- sympathy in a lot of ways to Homelander because he's obviously, I mean, aside from his politics, he's clearly got a lot of issues. The way he was brought up, the way he's been manipulated his entire life, uh, having this this immense um privilege of being a superhero being a white superhero living in the world where white privilege is a huge thing in general let's take a little break from the show to promote the many faces that's right i am also an artist i do ink paintings on paper of abstract faces A new face, a new painting gets released every single day over at InspiredDisorder.com. So head on over to my website to purchase original artwork directly from the artist. Also, there are prints available for select images. Head on over to InspiredDisorder.com. Buy original art. Buy prints if that's your jam. If you want 8x10 prints on high-quality paper, Also, if you're looking to wear some art, there are shirts available with original artwork by myself. Select faces from the many faces are also available in t-shirt form. You go to InspiredDisorder.com, you buy original artwork, you buy prints, you buy shirts. You're supporting an artist directly. And if you're the type of person that likes to invest in NFTs, there are also NFTs available for select faces. Go to InspiredDisorder.com now. And now let's get back to the show. 
the uh, Blue Hawk character is a lot of fun. Not a lot of fun. What am I saying? <laughs> the the like A Train trying to do what's right all of a sudden, trying to make that turn into being a good guy, changing his costume, changing his outfit, trying to be more outspoken for for human rights issues, uh, takes on Blue Hawk, who is basically like. Uh, uh, an analog for the police who is over patrolling black neighborhoods and and abusing black people uh, very similarly to and there's a situation where he gets him to apologize and of course it, it is not an apology he's basically reading a, a letter that some public relations person put together just the most unapologetic all of the same excuses that police use. I was afraid. They're savages. Blah. All the just all the racist, just propaganda that police spew as an excuse to murder black people, like effortlessly murder unarmed black people constantly. And when he gets his revenge, when A Train gets his revenge at that that uh, orgy. And he just drags him across the freeway for who knows how long, ending up giving himself a heart attack. Was I actually like that was a redeemable moment for me. Like it's like, okay, I like like I, I like that A Train had been trying to do that stuff. Aside from his energy drink commercial, which I think was a take on the there's like a Pepsi commercial. I never saw the commercial. It was like one of the Kardashian sisters did a Pepsi thing where it's like they gave uh, a Pepsi to one of the riot cops during uh, a Black Lives Matter protest. And it like a and then peace just broke out <laughs> like everybody was happy with e everybody like a train had a, a commercial that was like that for his energy drink. Um, so it's like he's kind of trying he's doing he's trying to do the same thing in the same ways that other like out of touch people try to there's oh my god but to finish on the the a train uh i like that he ended up getting his heart was pretty cool you know so he's like he's got a second chance he's on the right path of wanting to do right even though he keeps selling people out but it, like at least he's trying but similarly to that commercial that's clearly tone deaf this the show also did the thing that celebrities did, I think, it, during the during the pandemic, during the Black Lives, during the George Floyd protests, the the thing where the, they were all shot themselves in black and white, and singing the Imagine song, like they do a version of that in the show. Like so many every time, they they comment on all of those tone deaf political like things that celebrities did i thought was hilarious i thought that like it, it's like the show the writers of the show are so aware of what's going on currently in our culture and are able to blend that so effortlessly into the narrative of this show whether it's just how corporations try to profit off of these social movements, how celebrities and people of privilege are just so out of touch and tone deaf when it comes to trying to make a difference in any way. Just all, every aspect of it I thought was great. And the way it ends, like you have this this uh, you have this politician, uh, Victoria, Victoria Newman, right? I believe is her name, who Huey worked for, started working for at the end of the last season. They became this government organization that's charged with keeping tabs on the, the superheroes. Her kind, and she's the head popper. The fact that she is now going to be the vice president for, I believe, what is, I believe is, I don't know, I, I want to say, that she is the vice president on the Republican ticket. 
I believe. I could be wrong. I don't really remember what the politics were of that politician, but it seems like it, it would make sense that that's what it would be. Um, even though it felt like she was more on the Democratic side in the previous season. I don't know. But clearly in season four, there's going to be an election. It's going to be election year in season four. And a lot of things are going to come to a head. I mean, you have the boys now. Uh, Starlight is part of the boys. She's left the seven. She's left Vought. The CEO for Vought has been double, double crossed by, by uh, Newman. God, what is her? Where did I write that down? Where did I write her name down? Um, I know I wrote her name down. So Victoria, yeah, Victoria Newman. I I, I didn't write her. I'm pretty sure it's Newman is her last name. But her doing the double cross with the CEO who, like, raised her. Kind of a similar, in some ways, a similar story to Homelander. In some ways, we're going to see potentially what happens with her daughter. Because she gave her daughter V. Turned her daughter into a superhero. Obviously, Kamiko got her superpowers back. Uh, Maeve had some redemptions. Kind of saved everybody from from uh from soldier boy so she lost her powers but she's gonna go off in hiding you have homelander uh is with his son is with ryan now gonna teach him the ways of the dark side and we have we have butcher who has who was given 12 to 18 months to live so maybe next season is that last year right it's going to be the election year it's going to be maybe it'll be the final season it's it's going to be butcher's last hurrah probably will be hopped up on v the whole time i would imagine right maybe there'll be a cure at some point i don't know i love it i love the core group of the boys they're, you know, they're no longer, I don't think they're going to be working with th that guy. Who knows what what's going to happen with that government organization now that Victoria is gone. Uh, Black Noir, the cr kind of a crazy s episode where he's like hiding from uh, Soldier Boy. Like Soldier Boy's going back and finding all of his old crew and killing everybody because they sold him out to the Russians and they experimented on him and he hates them. And Black Noir was one of them. And he goes off hiding in like a Chuck E. Cheese and he visualizes these cartoon characters. But then, like the next episode gets killed by Homelander. But anyway, I absolutely enjoy this show. I love this show. I think this show understands what's going on in the world. I think it, it's able to... Even the dynamics of the end battle show how these writers understand the complexities of life and politics how difficult it can be because even in that last battle you had people teaming up that you never thought would team up you never thought butcher and homelander would ever team up for any reason and there is a moment in that battle where it does because they both care for the love the, the safety of ryan for different reasons but yeah, even that that last battle shows how well written this this show is. Shows how the the writers of the show understand how things in life aren't so easily clear cut. How complicated things can be, uh, and how like difficult things can be, uh, despite tr knowing what the right thing to do is. Um, I really enjoy the show. I'm excited for season four. I'm sh hopefully we won't have to wait as long as we had to wait. I'm sure the pandemic had a lot to do with the fact that it took took a while for season four to come out uh, or f season three to come out. I mean, let's see here. Hold on. Does it say when season three season three was 22? 
No. Oh, yeah, that's this season. Duh. Season two came out. So it's been two years. 2020. Yeah. Really good. Oh, and the the redhead. I forget her name. Her kind of rise within Vought to kind of be in charge. How she started kind of is just like a lackey. In is I think she may have started in season two. She pulls her hair out when she's getting frustrated and end up being bald by the end. Like her kind of rise to being, I think she's the new CEO of Vought right now, uh, is, is interesting as well. Uh, but anyway, I absolutely love the boys. I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, season three, currently streaming on Amazon Prime. One of the best shows on Amazon Prime, hands down. One of the best, the best superhero show i think out of all of them it it, like umbrella academy kind of dabbled in being socially aware in the last season but uh, you know a little bit on the nose wasn't as was not nearly as good but they're trying to do different things uh but yeah i love the boys i think it's one of the best shows out right now check it out New episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. And follow the show on Instagram at Ray Taylor Show. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.